Welcome to the Vendor Risk Management Demo. My name is Philip Roach. I'm a technical consultant at Zerna Solutions. Today we are going to talk about VRM, its capabilities, and walk through an end-to-end -end demo. VRM is the process of ensuring that the use of service providers and suppliers does not create an unacceptable potential for business disruption or a negative impact on performance. Risk and compliance management extends beyond internal systems and processes and also includes third party relationships. Some of the key capabilities of VRM are the vendor portfolio, vendor tiering, assessment management, vendor portals, issues remediations, and GRC integration. We will look at a typical process for vendor risk from the tiering, the assessment, the generation of findings, remediation of issues, reports and risks, and monitor. The first step in the vendor risk management process is to identify a vendor that we wish to assess. This will either be from existing data within the system or from new vendor records we create as needed. As we can see from the vendor risk overview dashboard, there are a selection of different reports available to define the vendors that we have within the system. In this case, we could potentially start from vendors where risk rating has not yet been set. As mentioned previously, the vendor is made up from the vendor portfolio. These are vendor records and vendor contact records. The vendor records are stored in the core company table where the field vendor is set to true. This makes them available to the vendor risk management process. If we look at an existing record, we can see the out of the box fields provided by ServiceNow. These are name, website, industry, vendor type, status, risk rating, rank tier, vendor tier, vendor manager, business owner, as well as contact information. You can also see from the company related records that we can look at the tiering assessments, the assessments themselves, issues, tasks, entity type, and whether or not they're active in the system, the risks and controls, as well as security scores, which are made available if the security score framework is used. A vendor must have at least one vendor contact that is set to primary. This vendor will be the primary person who will receive correspondence from the platform as well as the invite to the system. All of the fields can be customized as per the organization's needs, new fields added and new choices made available. Vendor records can also be created via third-party integrations, imported via spreadsheets or other data files, as well as created manually within the system. Second step in the VRM process is to send a tiering assessment to the organization by which to assess the vendor. We choose a vendor from our vendor list Scroll down to tiering assessments. We can add a new assessment. We can assign this assessment to an individual. This is typically somebody inside of the organization who will be handling the process of the tiering assessment. We then have the vendor, which is automatically completed for us. We will then add a name and a tiering assessor. This will be the actual individual or individuals who will complete this particular assessment. If we have more than one assessor, then we will have two different sets of results which will be aggregated to give us our score. We save this record. We can scroll down to the tiering questionnaire and add one from the bank. The different tiering questionnaires can be set up as needed. You take the default vendor tiering scale, which is what the results of the questionnaire will be applied to, with the eventual score. We submit this assessment. We 
impersonates the particular user. Take a look at the sample questionnaire. This questionnaire. Submit. We end our impersonation and return to our user record. We can look at the tiering assessment. And based on the information coming back from this tiering, we can see that it has been given a minor. Different questions inside the questionnaire can be configured to give different weights and scoring that will affect the scoring of that questionnaire. We can look at the assessment instance. Look at the user responses. We can then close out this assessment. Once this is closed, you also get the message that the next assessment has been queued up in advance. We return to the vendor. We can now see that the vendor tier has been set to minor. However, at any point we can change this if we feel that we need a different tier rating. The third step in the VRM process is the assessment. In the previous stage, we completed the tiering assessment, which led to the automatic generation of the assessment. The assessment is typically carried out by the vendor. If we scroll to the company record and go down to the related list, we can see the completed tiering assessment. If we switch over to the assessment tab, we can see the new assessment that has been set up in a state of draft. This is automated using the tier-based submission rules. The submission rules dictate the description and the template that is used when this assessment is generated. If we look at this assessment, we can see that the vendor is assigned the assessment template and description and name have come in from the tier-based assessment rule. From here, we can look at the record, scroll down, see the questionnaire and document request that are set up within this template. An assessment template is typically a questionnaire and a document request. There can be many questionnaires or many document requests inside of a template. Once we're happy with the information that is here, we may wish to assign an owner. and any users that may wish to be on the watch list. So you can see this record is in the state of draft. So we can submit this to the vendor. Once this has been submitted to the vendor, you can see a message at the top of the screen. If we impersonate our primary vendor contact and switch to the vendor portal, we can see that the questionnaire is waiting to be completed. The vendor, I can click on the questionnaire, assign them as needed, look at any issues and tasks that are raised against it. So if I can complete the questionnaire, Save my responses, exit out of the questionnaire. We can see that this initial questionnaire has been answered and is in a state of progress. We can also take a look at the document request. Specify if we do have a document, we will then be requested to attach a document. If we do not, then no other information is required. We can then submit this. In this particular option, we can see that there is one unanswered question, which would be the more information. But because this is not a mandatory field, it is not required. Once all of these have been completed, we can submit this assessment. 
We choose to ignore the questions if we feel that they are not relevant or are not needed and submit. The vendor can see then that this has been submitted back to ServiceNow and can then be worked internally by the team. We can switch back to the vendor record and see that the responses have been received. If we scroll down, we can take a look at the questionnaire and document requests. Take a look at the responses. We can see that the questionnaire has been given a risk rating of minor. The score, again, is calculated based on the configuration of the questionnaire. Different questions can be given different scores and different weighting basing on how important those questions are. We can then generate any observations. We can create issues and tasks either against particular questions within the questionnaire or we can create any tasks or issues that are related directly to the questionnaire and not to a question. Once we are happy with those observations, we can choose to finalize with vendor and then close out this record. If we return to our company record, we can now see that we have a risk rating of low. By default, ServiceNow does not set, automatically set this risk rating. This risk rating is typically a manual process that is set by the vendor. The fourth step in the VRM process is typically issues and remediation. As discussed in the previous step, issues and tasks can be generated against a questionnaire, question within a questionnaire, or from the company record. If we scroll to the company, down to the related lists, we can see that we have issues and tasks. We can generate an issue, give it a short description, And assign this to the vendor contact. If this is an internal process. We can analyze the record before we send the issue. We can give it a prioritization. Enter a recommendation, requesting additional information. Generate a task. Issue is typically something that needs to be corrected, whereas a task could be something that needs to be carried out. can then submit this to a vendor. If we return to the portal as the primary vendor, we can look at our issues tab and see the issues that has just been submitted. From here, the vendor can add any information or comments that they wish. Attach any additional documentation. If any tasks were associated, we can also check them here. Assign. If we have other users on the portal that are configured. As we can see from the activity stream, documentation has been attached. 
then resolve this issue. If we return to the vendor's issue record, we can see that it has now moved to a state of review. The document has been attached. You can see in the activity stream the information that was entered from John. And a powerful feature from ServiceNow is that I can actually still see the vendor logged in and can send direct communication if I wish to further my conversation. If I am happy with this result, close the issue. I return to the record. You can see that that issue is now gone. This issue list is set to only show active is true. If I were to remove it, I could still get into this record. Tasks are generated in the same way. This time, you can choose to have an internal task that does not go to vendor. I can bypass vendor. This gives me the option of having an internal task that is not viewed by the vendor that can be worked by the internal VRM team. Once this confirmation has been complete, I can close this record. I can see closed tasks and closed issues. Once the issues and remediations are closed and complete, that will conclude one assessment cycle. New assessments and new tiering assessments can be set up based on changes to fields inside of the record, for instance, a tier change, or new assessment triggered when a security score drops below a certain threshold. These can all be configured as per the organization's requirements. Also, completed assessments can be reopened if tasks or issues need to be raised against a particular questionnaire. This concludes our end-to-end -end demo for vendor risk management. Please stay tuned for our spotlight video where we will descend into areas in further detail. My name is Philip Roach for Sooner Solutions. Please leave your questions or comments below. Thank you very much.